Hallelujah. How's everybody today? Are you really? Yes. Prove it. <laughs> this is the day the Lord has made, and we will rejoice because we have a choice. The power to choose, the power to choose to be humble, the power to choose to be prideful, the power to choose to submit, the power to choose to... You know, God's already given us the power to do it. Amen? In other words, if the price is cooperation, then he's already given you power to what? Cooperate. Amen? There's that place called will. That's what Jesus fought over, isn't it? That's what he kept saying three times, if it... Uh, you know, if it's possible, let this cup pass me by, but not my will. He kept surrendering his will. The only way you surrender your will is to surrender your presence. There must be a constant exchange. It's not according to how you feel. It's consistent. Consistent. And when you do that, then you will maintain an arena of peace, joy, and righteousness in the Holy Spirit, which is the kingdom of God. Second Timothy chapter 3. Such a time and season where so many things are happening. I mean, we've got volcanoes, we've got earthquakes, we have floods, we have fires, we have wars, we have rumors of wars, we have, I mean, things are totally escalating, escalating. I mean, and, and what I mean by escalating, in other words, there's all of these things happening at one time almost, in a short period of time. Because the earth is shaking and groaning, and the heavens are shaking, and there's a great battle. What you see happening in the physical realm and weathers and everything else is because of the battles in the spiritual realm. In 2 Timothy chapter 3 and verse 1, which we've heard this before, let's speak it together. But know this, that in the last days, perilous times will come. So we know that we are in the last days because there's a constant, consistent, perilous times, troubles. You can sense it. You can sense irritation. You can sense the things in the spirit realm. You can sense more release now of demonic activity. Why? Because it's man that draws demonic activity out. So what happens is the unseen realm promotes wickedness and desires and things to that degree through technology, through whatever it can. And those things begin, when people begin to agree with it, more demons are released. More demonic forces are released because nothing can be released without a desire. So everybody got it? So we see that we are in perilous times. And he's telling them, why are you in perilous times? Why? Because men will be lovers of what? Themselves. Lovers of money. Boasters. Proud. Blasphemers. Disobedient to parents. Unthankful. Unholy. Unloving. Unforgiving. Slanderers. Without control over self. They will be brutal. Despisers of what is good and righteous. And they'll be traitors. In other words, they'll be untrusting. They'll be headstrong, haughty, lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God. Lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God. They have a form of godliness, but they actually deny its power because they're denying Christ, not even realizing it. And he says from such people turn away because associations bring impartations. Amen. Amen. And that, I believe that's one of the biggest struggles in, uh, right now, even in the, in the younger generation in peers, because they still want to please their friends. But yet in their heart, there's a tugging. There's a tug. You know, even when we were younger, we knew it was right and wrong, and there was a tug. But we chose to go how we felt and pleasing ourselves and pleasing others, not really understanding the arena of pleasing God. But we knew what was right and wrong. Amen? And it says for this, this sort of those, for having a, they have a form of God, in other words, turn away from them. Don't approve what they're doing. Because if you approve what they're doing, you're going to be judged right with them. From the, these are the sort that creep into households and make captives go old men and women, and they load them down with sins and lead them away with various lusts. So these are people that knew the truth, and their associations drew them away. <laughs> They're always learning and never able to come to the knowledge of the truth. They're always learning. They're not able to come. In other words, because they never 
mix it. They never take it seriously. Again, there's an area to where if your soul, I'm going to go right to this right for a second. If your soul is unconverted, then you can't convert. Are, are, are you understanding? If your soul is unconverted, then you can't convert the things of the world to discern. It's, you can't convert those. That's why God requires that the soul come into a full conversion and the process of conversion, or else you will not be able to convert or interpret. Does everybody understand? Worldly influences. You won't be able to convert those things to what pleases God and what displeases Him. That's why many are led astray by lust. Now he says, he said, they're always learning, but they never come to the knowledge of the truth because they've not been converted. There's a partial conversion. It's not fully converted yet. Not that we don't reach that. Does everybody, I mean, you know, it takes a long process of time. We finally reach it when we get home. But the purpose of now is God's constantly converting our soul, our mind, our will, emotion, imaginations, our choices, our desires. That's a constant conversion. And without cooperation with it, that conversion stops. So if there's not a constant conversion, the moment a person stops from allowing this Holy Spirit because he's the one that converts, stops, once that person stops allowing the Holy Spirit to convert that soul, that person can no longer convert or interpret. And that person becomes stagnant. And now he goes back to the world instead of to the Spirit. <clears throat> he says here, now as Janus and Jabiris resisted Moses, so did these also resist the truth. Not that they don't know that, they just resist it. Men of corrupt minds and disapproved concerning the faith because there's no connection. There's no reality of eternity. But they will progress no further. In other words, they're going to be exposed. For their folly will be manifested to all as theirs also was. But you have carefully followed my doctrine and manner of life, purpose, faith, long-suffering, love, and perseverance persecutions and afflictions which happened to me in Antioch and Icium and Lystra. What persecutions I endured, and out of them all the Lord did what? Delivered. He delivered me. He delivered me. Yes, and all who desire to live godly in Christ Jesus will do what? They will suffer. They will suffer. See, people aren't willing to suffer. They will suffer. That means also endure. They will suffer. You will be persecuted. You are going to have to come against your desires for the world. You have to overcome them. You have to suffer in the areas of cutting loose of everything of the world. That is a pain. Yes, all who desire to live godly will, in Christ Jesus, they will suffer what? Persecution. You will suffer persecution by the unseen realm and by the seen realm. It says, but evil men and imposters will grow worse and worse, deceiving and being deceived. But you must do what? Continue in the things which you have learned. That word continue is vital. Continue. That's consistency. And the things that you've learned, in other words, and put them to practice, and be assured of knowing from whom you have learned them, and from and that from childhood you have known the Holy Scriptures which is able to make you wise for salvation through faith which is in Christ Jesus. These are called enemies of the cross. These individuals are called enemies of the cross. Because Jesus paid a tremendous price. These are enemies of the cross. Does everybody get it? Why? Because they're not willing to cooperate with the price. And what is that price from the cross? Jesus said it. Deny yourself. Pick up the cross and fight, and then you can follow. Amen. So you can see right off the bat in this whole chapter that the individuals are not willing to deny themselves. These are end-time enemies of the cross. Let's go to the next chapter, verse four, uh, chapter 4, verse 1. What does he tell them? 
He says, I charge you therefore before God and the Lord Jesus Christ, who will judge the living and the dead. No reality of judgment. Don't realize, see, because they, they try to avoid, I guess what you might say, consequences in the present, not realizing the consequences of the eternal is a gazillion times worse. Or a gazillion times better. <laughs> I charge you that before God and Lord Jesus Christ who will judge the living and the dead at his appearing and his kingdom. Do you know how close we are to that? I mean, we are very close. Gosh, I want to say some things that I can't. I can only tell you that we are very close. They are working on it right now. Behind closed doors, there are things that are establishing. We are so close. That's why he says preach the word or speak the word. When you preach the word, you speak it, right? He didn't say read the word. Not that you don't read the word. But he's saying preach the word. Preach the word. Speak the word. Speak it. See, why? When you speak the word, you sow in the spirit. When you speak in tongues, you pray in the Spirit. There's two different things. But it's still sowing in the Spirit, isn't it? Okay. We'll get to that later. Preach the Word. Speak the Word. Be ready in season and out of season. Convince, rebuke, and exhort with long suffering and what? And teaching. With long suffering and what? Teaching. For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine. But according to their what? Own desires. Their own desires. Because they have itching ears, they will heap up for themselves teachers. In other words, you, you, you heard of like, the word says bad company corrupts good habits. Amen. Or, or, or people that are uh, the miserable hang around the miserable. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> or the rebellious hang around the rebellious. Yeah. It says here, For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, but according to their own lustful desires and their own doctrines, because they have itching ears, they're going to look for others who agree with them. And they will turn their ears away from the truth that sets them free and be turned to fables and lies and deception. He said, But you must be what? Watchful in all things. Endure afflictions. Endure them. Do the work of an evangelist. Fulfill your ministry. Again, speak the word. <laughs> speak the word to who? Yourself. <laughs> Why? Because what happens when you don't do this? There's a call of spirit. It's called a stupor spirit. What causes drift. It will cause you to drift. And you're no longer looking eternally. You're looking temporary. Doctrine is knowledge. We're going we're gonna to go on to something else Tuesday, but they are misled by their own desires associating with those that agree with deceptive words. Deceptive words of betrayal. Betrayal to what? The cross. Not willing to not deny themselves, pick up the cross and follow. These are enemies of the cross in James 4. This is why we're in perilous times. Man, you can see it all over the place. James 4, verse 1. Where do wars and fights come from among you? Do they not come from your what? Desires. desires. Influence comes from desire. Influence is always desiring. In other words, the demonic forces are trying to bring in a desire. A desire. A desire. That's why the word says, those who will be filled, those who thirst and hunger for what? Righteousness. That's a desire. The moment you stop thirsting and hunger for righteousness and begin to compromise, you've opened the door. And that door will not shut until you turn from it. It's a permanent door to the enemy that is open until you turn. You can repent, but not turn. 
that door will stay open. They do not, do you not know, do they not come from your own desires for what? Pleasure, selfishness. That war in your what? In your members. There's a war in you, it's constant. It's a war from the old to the new. Divine nature, the carnal nature. There's a constant war in you. But thank God for the anointing. If you're walking in the anointing. <laughs> if you're not, you've lost the battle. It says, you lost and do not have. You murder and covet and cannot obtain. You fight and war, yet you do not, uh, you do not have because you do not what? Ask. You ask and do not receive because you ask amiss that you may spend it on your carnal pleasures. Adulterers and adulteresses, do you not know that friendship with the world is enemy or hatred with God? Whoever therefore wants to be a friend of the world becomes a what? An enemy God. These are enemies of the cross also. In other words, God's not our enemy. We become his. Why? Because if he can't trust you, hello. Remember, trust is always being earned. Or do you think that the scripture says in vain, the spirit who dwells in us yearns jealousy, but he gives more grace, more of his plan, more favor. Therefore, he says, God resists the proud, but he gives grace to the humble. Therefore, submit to God, resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Enemies of the cross, the price of cooperation and denial of self. Hmm. These are individuals that uh, are not willing to pay the price of cooperation or deny themselves. They are friends of worldly appetites. They are enemies of God, unwilling to submit and follow. They carry a deceptive heart, not pure. The word says only those of pure in heart will see God. If that says, if, if it says those in pure in heart will see God, only those in pure in heart will make it home then. Is everybody okay? Amen. Philippians 3. So you may be stepping in locations and going to places and you may hear the Holy Spirit tell you this place is enemies of the cross. These people are enemies of the cross. He's not saying that to condemn. He's saying that to warn you. So that you're, you're alert and you're aware. Philippians 3.17 Would you speak with me? Brethren, join in, my, in following my example and note those who walk as you have us for a pattern. For many walk of whom I have told you often and now tell you even weeping that they are what? Enemies of the cross of Christ whose end is destruction, whose God is their belly, whose glory is their shame, who set their what? Mind on earthly things. So if you set your mind on earthly things, you certainly set your desires on earthly things. For our citizenship is in heaven, from which we also eagerly wait for the Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ, who will do what? Transform our lonely body, that it may be conformed to his glorious body, according to the working by which he is able even to subdue all things to himself. Wow. These are enemies of the cross. They've stepped, stepped into religious acts with no true relationship. Refusing to die to their flesh. <laughs> their God is their desires. Their God is their own desires. And they care only for the things of this world. Somebody get it? <clears throat> God's wants are not priority in their life. Their wants are. Yeah. 
you know, many of these individuals want a steady diet of positive, inspirational, and, and self-help messages. <laughs> to feel good about themselves. They want a life of feel good. That's what they look for. If they don't feel good, then they don't do it. These are enemies of the cross because they walk in a place of undisciplined life. A person that lives a disciplined life does not live a life of feeling. They live a life of truth. Remember, what are the feelings? Peace, joy, and righteousness in the Holy Spirit. And that is God's love. All that combination is God's love. Peace, joy, and righteousness in the Holy Spirit is God's love. Anything beyond that is lust. Feel good about themselves. Self-help messages, it, inspiration. I, I, somebody needs to tell me I'm good. How about you're an idiot and deceived? Quit living out of the soul and live out of the spirit. Romans 8. All oh, glory. Romans 8, verse 1. There is therefore now no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus who do not walk according to the flesh, but according to the Spirit. Why? Because ones are, they, they are cooperators of the cross and the other ones are enemies of the cross. For the law of the Spirit of life in Christ Jesus made me free from the law of sin and death. For what the law could not do in that it was weak through the flesh, God did by sending his own Son in the likeness of sinful flesh. On account of sin, he condemned sin in the flesh. So if he condemns sin in the flesh, you want to come out of the flesh. It's real simple. Because if you're in the flesh, you're going to be condemned. So where did he condemn sin? In the flesh. You don't have to be a genius to figure that one out. And you don't have to go to cemetery school either. Just be filled with the Spirit. Why? Why? He's the one that's converting your soul. And then what are you going to be able to do? Convert and interpret. Oh, glory. Glory. God did it by sending his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh. On account of sin, he condemned sin in the flesh. That the righteous requirement of the law might be fulfilled in us who do not walk according to the flesh, but according to the spirit. So if you're walking according to the flesh, you are condemned. That's where sin is. For those who live according to the flesh set their minds and desires on the things of the flesh. But those who live according to the spirit, the things of the spirit. For to be human-minded, carnally-minded, is death. People don't use that word too much. Human-minded. Those are human precepts. We're no longer to be humanites. We're to be eternal lights. For to be carnally-minded is death. To be spiritually-minded is life and peace. Because to be human-minded is enmity against God. For it is not subject to the law of God, nor indeed can it be. Whoa, ho. So then those who are in the flesh cannot please God. Remember, your flesh will not commit suicide. Your flesh will not commit suicide. It must be killed by you. These enemies of the cross want to hear about suffering. They don't want to hear about sufferings, do they? Or sacrifice or anything that may cause discomfort to the flesh. They don't want to hear about that. They reject accountability, examination, exposure, and fellowship. Because that's what it brings. Somebody got it? They reject what? Accountability, examination, exposure, and fellowship. James chapter 1. Oh, glory. Is everybody okay? Amen. Why are we getting this message? And time. 
It's to warn us and to carry the message to warn others. James chapter 1. Is everybody there? In verse 2, my brethren and my sisters, so the sisters are not excluded. Amen. Count it all joy when you fall into various trials, knowing that the testing of your faith, your connection, your relationship, you're going to be tested on, you're going to be challenged on, produces patience, that's endurance. Every challenge is to produce endurance. You're not to run from the challenges, you're to endure them. You're to embrace them. Why? Because you're going to learn something out of every, every one. But let patience have its perfect work that you may be perfect and what? Complete, lacking what? Nothing. If any of you lacks wisdom, let him ask of God, who gives to all liberally and without reproach, and it will be given to him. But let him ask in faith with no doubting, for he who doubts is like a wave of sea driven, tossed by the wind. For let not that man suppose that he will receive anything from the Lord. He is double-minded man, unstable in all of his ways. Remember, <laughs> again, your flesh will not commit suicide. You must kill it. These individuals refuse to embrace challenges to grow because of discomfort to the flesh. Amen. Because of what? Discomfort to the flesh. Their position is unstable. It's what? And mistrusting. Glory. First Peter chapter 1. Blessed be the God and the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who according to his abundant mercy has begotten us again to a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead, to an inheritance incorruptible and undefiled and does not fade away, reserved in heaven for you, who are kept by the power of God through faith for salvation, ready to be revealed in the last time. In this you greatly rejoice, though now for a little while, if need be, you've been grieved by various trials. Well, welcome to the kingdom. That the genuineness, genuineness of your faith be much more precious than gold that perishes. Though it is tested by fire, may be found to the praise and honor and glory at the revelation of Jesus Christ. Whom having not seen you love, though now you do not see him, yet believing you rejoice with joy inexpressibly and full of glory. Receiving the end of your faith, the salvation of your souls. These end time enemies of the cross, drifted individuals. They're drifted individuals. No living hope. Hope is not living. See, when hope is living, it's constant. Does everybody understand it? If it's living, it's constant. And what is your hope? Your hope is in Christ. That is faith, you know. Hope. It's, it's constant. It's connected. But it doesn't mean the hope of the world. There's a different hope that the world understands. The hope is, gosh, I hope this will happen. That's not God's hope. Does everybody get it? This is not what God, this is not spirits. This is not what God's talking about. Gosh, I hope this happens. Gosh, I hope God hears me. There's, that's not what he's talking about. The living hope is the hope that is in the future. Because you live from the future to the present. You know it. I know he hears. I know he sees. I know his promises are true. Gosh, I hope he answers me. That's not what he's talking about. He's going to answer you. And it may be no. Amen. Or not time. Drifted individuals <laughs> from a living hope in Christ with no desire to serve in the kingdom. See, they don't have a desire. They just want to, it's all about themselves. They suck off of Christianity. But they really don't want to serve in the kingdom. They want to use God to serve themselves. 
but really not serve. See, every one of us should have a desire in some position to serve in the kingdom. If you don't, you're an enemy of God. Does somebody get it? You're an enemy of the cross. Something's not right if there's something that you don't want to serve in the kingdom. My God, that's where you live now. That is your home now. You're to be living in the kingdom. If you don't want to serve in the kingdom, then you certainly ain't living in the kingdom. Whew. No desire to serve in the kingdom. Faith is in themselves, not in the word of promises. They're out of order with no divine revelation. And it's because of the unconverted soul not able to convert worldly influence to godly decisions. I'll say that again. Because the soul is unconverted, it's not able to convert worldly influences to godly decisions. Galatians 6. Ah, no, let's go to Jude. Jude. Antine enemies of the cross. Jude. Verse 16. It says, these are grumblers, complainers, walking according to their own lusts. They mouth great swelling words, flattering people to gain advantage. But you, beloved, remember the words which were spoken before by the apostles of our Lord Jesus Christ. And how you, they told you that there would be mockers in the last time who would walk according to their own ungodly lusts. Why? Because of an unconverted soul. These are sensual persons who cause divisions. Oh, they speak things. They cause divisions with their mouth. Because they have no understanding. Remember, an unconverted soul cannot convert. They are sensual persons who cause divisions not having the Spirit, not in fellowship with the Holy Spirit, who is the generator of this conversion. Amen. But you, beloved, building yourselves up in the most holy faith, praying in the Holy Spirit, which means tongues, keeping yourselves in the love of God, looking for the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ unto eternal life. Very, very powerful. These individuals are not allowing the Holy Spirit to rule their life. Amen? Amen. Or their death. <laughs> They're not willing to allow him to rule their life or their death. Again, in Galatians 6 and verse 7 through 10, we don't have to go there. It talks about praying in the Spirit. Maybe we better go there. Let's go there. Just so everybody sees the word. Don't think I'm crazy. Although I can be occasionally. You can ask my wife. She lives with me. Hallelujah. In verse 7, do not be what? Deceived. Deceived. You know, I, I just want to emphasize again. Uh, people generally are not bad. They're just deceived. You know, people are just deceived which produces a bad fruit. Amen? But you want to slap the hell out of them, make room for heaven, so that deception gets thrown out, man, and so reality comes. It's like, come on, get it right. Quit reacting and start responding. Stop, you know why people react? Because of the unconverted soul. They're reacting to protect themselves. They react to protect self. Instead of respond. Do not be deceived. God is not mocked. 
Whoever, whatever man sows, that he shall what? Reap. For he who sows to the flesh. Now, wait a minute. The flesh, Jesus condemned sin in the flesh. So if you're sowing in the flesh, come on now. That means you're going to reap what? Corruption. For he who sows in his flesh, will the flesh reap corruption? But he who sows to the Spirit, will the Spirit reap everlasting life? And let us not grow weary while sowing in the Spirit. For in due season we shall reap if we don't want. Lose heart. Don't quit. Again, praying in the Spirit is tongues. Amen? Amen. Sowing in the Spirit is speaking the Word and singing the words. Both will reap life. Mark 8. Enemies of the cross. In verse 34. Is everybody there? Mark 8, verse 34. When Jesus had called the people to himself with his disciples also. So the people and his disciples. Amen. He said to them, whoever desires to come after me, let him what? Deny himself. Take up his cross and follow me. Deny himself. For whoever desires to save his life will lose it, but whoever loses his life for my sake and the gospel's sake, doctrine's sake, will save it. For what will a profit a man if he gains the whole world and loses his own soul? Or what will a man give in exchange? Exchange. I love that word exchange. For his own soul. That's why you and I need to be a live a constant. We live a life of exchange. We're exchanging. Everything's in exchange. We're exchanging our past for the future, our presence for God's presence, everything. Verse 38, for whoever is ashamed of me and my words in this adulterous and sinful generation, of him the Son of Man also will be ashamed when he comes into glory. And of his Father with the holy angels. Whoever is ashamed. Why? Listen, in, in, in this enemies of cross, these are self-preservation and materialism. It is the selfie and feel-good generation providing uh, or, or avoiding, I'm sorry, they're avoiding all discomfort to the flesh. Has everybody got it? I'm going to say it again. It's the self-preservation and materialism generation they are the selfie and feel good they are they're always avoiding all discomfort to the flesh that's why jesus said you must deny yourself there are two deaths and two resurrections this is the first death to deny yourself it is slow Ooh. it is painful it's stubborn. <laughs> but when you're willing to die to the flesh, God is willing to resurrect you in a new life. Right now, here. That's why it's constant. That's why you can't walk in the new unless you deny the old. People are trying to walk in the new without denying the old. It ain't going to work. That's like swimming with a 25 pound weight and a float that only holds five pounds. You're going to sink. Oh, hallelujah. The first resurrection, I mean, the, the first death is to deny yourself. Amen? Amen? When you're willing to deny yourself, God is willing to resurrect you into the new life then. That's what the scripture says in 2 Corinthians chapter 5 and verse 17. He who is in Christ, in Christ is to be dead to yourself. As a new creation, old things have passed away, all things have become new. Amen? So to deny yourself is the beginning process of converting the soul. That must be on a constant thing, isn't it? Is everybody okay? 
Romans 6. There are Christians that are enemies of the cross and don't even realize they are. Because they live a feel-good life. Romans 6 and verse 1. Glory. Let's speak it, please. What shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? Certainly not. How shall we who died to sin live any longer in it? Or do you not know that as many of us who were baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? Therefore we were buried with him through baptism into death, that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we also should walk in newness of what? Life. For if we've been united together in the likeness of his death, certainly we also shall be in the likeness of his resurrection. Again, until you're willing to deny yourself, you cannot walk in the new resurrection life. Knowing this, that our old man was crucified. Remember, your old man will not commit suicide. You must kill him. The old man was crucified with Jesus that the body of sin might be done away with, that we should no longer be slaves to sin. For he who has died has been freed from sin. He who has been died, who, he who's dead. Now, if we died with Christ, we believe we shall also live with him. The first death is continuous death to self and flesh desires. Has everybody got it? The first resurrection is continuous transformation into a new life. So the first death is continuous. It's continuous. Death to self and fleshly desires. And the first resurrection is a continuous transformation into the new life by conversion of the soul. Revelations 20. When we fall into that arena of an enemy of a cross, when we fall into that position or that state of being that will be recognized quickly and come out. Amen. Revelation 20. In verse 4. Everybody there? And I saw thrones and they sat on them. And judgment was committed to them. Then I saw the souls of those who had been beheaded for their witness to Jesus. And for the word of God. Who had not worshipped the beast or his image. And had not received his mark on their foreheads or on their hands. And they lived and reigned with Christ for a thousand years. But the rest of the dead did not live again until the thousand years were finished. This is the first resurrection. Blessed and holy is he who has part in the first resurrection. Over such the second death has no power, but they shall be priests of God and of Christ and shall reign with him for one thousand years. 1 Corinthians 15. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <clears throat> there are also what? Celestial. celestial bodies and terrestrial bodies. But the glory of the celestial is one and the glory of terrestrial is another. There is one glory of the sun, another glory of the moon, and another glory of the stars. For one star differs from another star in glory. So also is the resurrection of the dead. The body is sown in corruption. It is raised in corruption. It is sown in dishonor. It is raised in glory. It is sown in weakness. It is raised in power. It is sown a natural body. It is raised a spiritual body. There is a natural body and there is a spiritual body. 
And so it is written, the first man, Adam, became a living being. The last Adam became a life-giving spirit. However, the spiritual is not first, but the natural, and afterward the spiritual. The first man was the, of the earth, made of dust. The second man is the Lord from heaven. As was the man of dust, so also are those who are made of dust. And as the heavenly man, so also are those who are heavenly. And as we have borne the image of the man of dust, we shall also bear the image of the heavenly man. Now this I say, brethren, that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God, nor does corruption inherit incorruption. But behold, I tell you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trumpet, for the trumpet will sound, and the dead will be raised incorruptible. And we shall be changed, for this corruptible must put on incorruption, and this mortal must put on immortality. So when this corruptible has put on incorruption, and this mortal has put on immortality, then I shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, Death is swallowed up in victory. O death, where is your sting? O Hades, where is your victory? The sting of death is sin, and the strength of sin is the law. But thanks be to God who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, my beloved, be steadfast, immovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, knowing that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. This is the second death. The second death is physical. It's physical. You will give up this body either through death of your last breath or be changed alive. Amen. So the second death is physical and resurrection of the second resurrection is a new body. The first death and resurrection changes or converts our soul into his image. That's the first death and resurrection. Changing our soul into his image. Amen? The second death, again, it's physical. It's the last when you give up your last breath and you get a new body. Because you're, 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 you've entered heaven. You can't physically get there. You spiritually get there. So we see that there's two deaths and two resurrections. Amen? But the enemies of the cross will not change. They cannot put on incorruptible. Amen? Let's, and Matthew 7, and we're going to close here. Now, Matthew 7, 13, but before we go there, grab hold of this. The Holy Spirit is the agent to resurrections and our death. Amen? If he didn't, have the opportunity or we didn't allow him, if he didn't resurrect you the first time in the image and likeness of Christ, he won't resurrect you the second time. Has everybody got it? If he didn't have the opportunity, we didn't allow him to resurrect us the first time, he will not resurrect you the second time. Verse 13, what does it say? Enter in by the narrow gate, for wide is the gate, and broad is the way. That leads to destruction, and there are many who go in by it. Because narrow is the gate, and difficult is the way which leads to life. Difficult. It's discomforting. And there are a few who find it. Beware of false prophets and teachers and who come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly they are wolves and ravenous wolves. You will know them by their fruits. You'll know them by their associations with worldliness, whether they approve certain things or they disapprove of. Anyone who approves of homosexuality and lesbian and perversion is an enemy of the cross. And anyone who votes for those individuals is an enemy of the cross. Anyone who approves abortion, adultery, 
Same-sex marriage is an enemy of the cross. Anyone who approves of anything that God disapproves of is an enemy of the cross. And they have an unconverted soul. Why? Because they're not able to convert worldly influences to a godly decision. You'll know them by their fruits. Verse 16. Do men gather grapes from thorn bushes or figs from thistles? Even so, every good tree bears good fruit, but a bad tree bears bad fruit. A good tree cannot bear bad fruit, nor can a bad tree bear good fruit. Every tree that does not bear good fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire. Therefore, by their fruits, you will know them. Not everyone who says to me, Lord. Now, you got to grab hold of this. If somebody's saying to the Lord, Lord, that means they know. <laughs> There's been a relationship. Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, shall enter the kingdom of heaven. But he who does the will of my Father in heaven. Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, I've, have we not prophesied in your name, cast out demons in your name, done many wonders in your name, fed, clothed, and sheltered? And, and I will declare to them, I never knew you. Depart from me, you who practice what? Lawlessness. Therefore, whoever hears these sayings of mine and does them, I will liken him to a wise man who built his house on a rock and the rain descended and the floods came and the winds blew and beat on that house and it did not fall for it was founded on the rock, the anointing. But everyone who hears these sayings of mine and does not do them, he will be like a foolish man who built his house on the sand and the rain descended and the winds and the floods came and the winds blew and beat on that house and it fell and great was its fall. People who are caught up as the enemies of the cross, great will be their fall. Again, if you've not allowed the Holy Spirit to resurrect you in the first one, he will not resurrect you in the second. Amen? It's a hard word. It's a reality word. It's a time for now and in season because things are ready to escalate. God is not only doing the double portion and bringing an early and later rain, double exposure, Double anointing, double blessings. Amen? We're in a process right now where God is trying to move his children quickly into the secret place. Because there are multiple storms that are coming. You see physical storms. But there are spiritual storms that are coming that are going about to wipe out many people that have no idea because they're out of position. Those who are in position will be double blessed. Those out will miss it. Amen. Father, we thank you for your word. We are honored and blessed. We pray, Father, that the seed that's been imparted in us will grow and bear fruit for your glory and that it will come to remembrance. And Lord, any time that we step into that arena to where we become an enemy of the cross, slap us, kick us, step on our feet, convict us, scream at us. Send someone across our path and tell us so that we don't offend you, but we maintain a pure heart in relationship with you. We commit this to you, Lord. We welcome the Holy Spirit, the agent who brings resurrection and death to us so that we may deny ourselves, pick up the cross, battle, fight, and follow you and be sons of daughters of honor, with an honorable death and an honorable resurrection for your glory in Jesus' name. And everybody said amen. <laughs>